Thank you. Like half an hour ago. Are you excited? Yeah. Before we start, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today. I would also like to pay my respects to elders, past and present. Without whom, the defunct would not be able to be brought to you tonight. You ready to get funky? Let's do it.
you, thank you, thank you. Holy moly. It's really hot up here. Holy dooly. Oh. Well, you look at all these old photos of these 70s musicians, 70s funk jazz musicians, they're all sweating bullets. And um, I'm sure it's entirely because of the heat on stage and nothing to do with the indulgences that these people seem to uh, partake in. Um, not us. This is a PG threat show. We're responsible. Um, but it's hot up here. It's really hot. Um, thank you so much for coming. Uh, this show has been two years in the making. Yeah. Thanks so much, COVID and Omicron. We actually did have a date for this show. It was December... What? Feb? Was it Feb? Who bloody knows? It was about 12 months ago. It was going to be at a venue called Vintage Vulture, one of our local favourites. Unfortunately, it's no longer. Um, although I believe it's spirit lingers and it's uh, destined to reopen at some stage. Um, so, yes, we, we had a, ba a date booked. Um, we couldn't do it because of COVID and our crowd capacity was going to be like literally 20 people. And I was like, I, mean, I guess I could charge $300 a ticket and maybe break even, but that's not going to work. So... We delayed it and here we are. Um, thank goodness we did. In December of last year, oh, firstly, who here actually has heard of, other than my advertising for this, of the Brecker Brothers? All right, all the jazz people put their hands up. Fantastic. The old people. <laughs> you calling me old? <laughs> All right, yeah, so the Brecker brothers were Michael and Randy Brecker. Um, in the commercial world, you probably haven't really heard of them, uh, although you have heard them. Um, much like Niall Rogers is famous for being the funkiest rhythm guitarist of all time, Michael Brecker and Randy Brecker are famous for being two of, if not the best, horn section people that I've ever, ex ever lived. Um, Michael, unfortunately, is no longer with us. He passed away in 2007. However, his old, uh, older brother, Randy, is still going strong and playing. And thanks to this project, I had the great honour of having a Zoom call with him. Yeah. Um, this man is a multi-Grammy award-winning musician and, more importantly, one of my heroes. Um, all the accolades are, are very well and good, but the point is that he has changed my life. Um, so positively and giving me so much inspiration to play this silly piece of uh, tubing. Um, as, as it has its inspirations, true for Dusty as well, who has actually opened for the Brecker Brothers before. <laughs> Holy moly. Also, can we get a hand for the soloist? How was that? Tyler Venter on guitar and Dusty on alto. Oh yeah. Uh, I thought, due to their incredible uh, reputation in the industry, that it would be a shame if we didn't do a little bit of a medley now um, of famous songs that you probably know and didn't know that the Brecker Brothers were on. So, the first song we're going to play is by Dire Straits. Can any of you guess what we're about to play? No? All right, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Thank you. 
Met my old lover on the street last night She seemed so glad to see me I just smiled And we talked about the old times And we drank ourselves some beers Still crazy after all these years Oh, still crazy after all So we, that was Dire Straits, your latest trick. Um, that was Randy at the start of that song, and then Michael Brecker afterwards. Um, I knew that song just from being alive. And um, when I realised that it was Mike and Randy, I was just like, wow, that's... Well, that makes sense, actually. Who else would you ask? You know, these are two of the greatest musicians available in the 70s and 80s and 90s and 2000s. Um, who here has heard of Donald Fagan? Oh, yeah. Does anyone remember the album The Nightfly? Yeah. yeah. Well, they were on that too. Now, the next one really freaked me out. I, uh, who's seen the movie Wayne's World? Anyone seen that movie? Yeah. Party time, excellent. <laughs> yeah, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's a terrible film, but it's a classic. <laughs> um, in the second movie, there was a cameo appearance from a rather extravagant pop band, rock band, sorry, called Aerosmith. Hell yeah. Now, <laughs> when I found out that the Brecker Brothers were, had played with Aerosmith, um, that I actually couldn't believe. Uh, Don Fagan makes sense, but Aerosmith seemed a bit weird to me. All right, Tyler, go on. two songs make a lot of sense. She's the queen of funk and the queen of soul and who better than to sing her parts than our amazing Kate Lewis. This is Shaka Khan.
Bruce Springsteen. Remember his album, Born to Run? Yeah, they were on that as well. Some, some very stylish um, accessories right now because the next band is, oh God, it's got to be the coolest band of all time. Um, this band was famous for two reasons. One, for bringing the funk and for smoking a lot of marijuana. wasn't on it however Michael was and it was just too fantastic not to include um, this is holding out for a hero
All right, so do you get the idea about how prolific these guys were? Is it making sense yet? <laughs> okay, so um, you, you won't know any of the other songs we're about to play. That's the only part of the show that you're actually going to know. Sorry about that. Um, although you have had two years to research this stuff, guys. Come on, seriously. <laughs> All right, so we're now going to play a couple of songs that were by the Brecker Brothers. While they were doing all of this incredible popular music stuff during the day, they were performing at jazz clubs at night, playing this kind of stuff. This is called If You Want a Boogie, Forget It!
Thank you so much. Thank you. If you want a boogie, forget it. If you're sitting in your chairs, then you're doing it all wrong. Those lyrics are extremely pertinent. If you ever hear that song again, make sure you obey them. All right, we're going to slow it down a little bit, kind of. Not much of the Brecker Brothers stuff was um, soft. <laughs> it was all very loud. This one is called Lovely Lady, and it's going to feature the loveliest of ladies, I mean people, Josh Chenoweth on the flugel. Please enjoy. Lovely Lady.
Josh Sanawith on the flugel. Breaking hearts. Beautiful. And um, how, was, how was Dusty Cox just then on the outro as well? Dusty maybe has uh, arguably one of the most tough roles in this show because he uh, is technically playing the part of David Sanborn. And if any of you know who David Sanborn is, he's probably the most unique saxophonist ever. Uh, you might remember him. Do you remember David Bowie's Young Americans? Remember that song? Yeah, that sax player is David Sanborn. Um, he was really big in the 80s and 90s in the um, smooth jazz world, although he hates that term. Fair enough. Um, and his style was phenomenal. Go check out David Sanborn. Um, another round of applause for Dusty for trying to pull off some Sanborn and doing well. <laughs> All right, this is our last tune of this set. There will be plenty more. And uh, this is called Dig a Little Deeper. And I can't remember who it's going to feature. Let's just do it. <laughs> Ladies and 
gentlemen, set two, you know what that means. I'm undoing another button. Oh, it's amazing what a $50 note will do. Feel free to chuck them up here and more might. No, please, don't, don't. This is, this is, that's not appropriate. And I am not ripped enough for that. Not yet. All right, welcome back to set two. We're going to do uh, an amazing instrumental. Um, it is called Grease Peace.
Paula Bolling. Greece, peace. Fantastic. Um, we're now going to slow it down straight away. We've all had it for a couple of drinks. We're all feeling a bit more emotional, a bit more romantic. This is going to feature... God, isn't he handsome? Brendan Foster. <laughs> look, at that, look at that chest there. No, don't look at it. Uh, this is called What Can a Miracle Do? It was written by Don Gronick and Luther Vandross. You ever heard of him? Yeah. If you don't know Luther Vandross, go look him up. He's a really big deal. Um, and he wasn't really that famous yet when this was written. He, um, in, in, my, in my video call with Randy, we talked about this briefly, and Randy explained that um, Luther's work with the Brecker Brothers, um, though it wasn't the only thing that helped his career, it was a really big part of it. He did a lot of vocal arranging of a lot of the songs we're playing. Um, anyway, this is What Can a Miracle Do?
Thank you very much. Brenton Foster. Beautiful. All right, we're going to invite back up the horns and Eliza. Eliza is going to sing lead on this song. Oh, yeah. This song is called I Love Wasting Time With You.
Eliza Dixon. Holy moly. Damn straight. Holy crap. Well, you've got to keep singing lead. You're on lead on the next song. So um, let's, let's swap places. You go here. I'm going to go there. I'm going to sing back up. Swerty can deal with it. <laughs> Please put your hand together for our amazing sound man, Swerty. <laughs> this show is about as complicated as it gets. Two keyboards that are constantly changing patches, uh, four horns, um, loud drums, three BBs. This is, uh, this, is, this is a terrible idea. <laughs> Whose idea was this? Oh! This was your idea. This was my idea. I accidentally got the set list wrong. Damn it. <laughs> Two years in the making and I got it wrong. We'll just have to save it. We'll just have to save it. It's fine. Eliza, uh, Eliza will sing lead. She'll sing lead in the next song. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to stay on saxophone. Crap. <laughs> this one's going to feature Josh Chenoweth. This is a beautiful song. It's called As Long As I've Got Your Love.
Thank you very much. Put your hands together once again for our BBs. Beautiful. Uh, another round of applause, please, for Josh Chenoweth. And at the end, you just heard the beautiful Tyler Venter on guitar. Okay, now I'm going to get on BBs. All right, this is a really funky number, another one. Um, if you've got the good feeling in your feet, absolutely, please do that. <laughs> Have you got any other moves? I don't know, I'm not a dancer, I'm a saxophone player. But if you're feeling like having a boogie, please, either in your chairs if, or stand up if you're able, it'd be much welcomed. Just don't obscure the cameras. That's my one rule, that's my one rule. All right, this is called, you got to give it.
Jackson. Woo! Thank you. Beautiful. Oh man, this singing thing, it's fun. It's really fun. My friend Jess is in the front row. We do quite a lot of uh, corporate gigs together and every single time I turn to her and go, damn, I wish I could sing more. Because I'm not a singer, I'm a saxophone player. Um, sing more. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. It might happen again tonight. I don't know, let's find out. Okay, next up is, um, it can only be described as a pop banger. It's just so feel good, mid-tempo pop banger. Um, this is gonna feature the amazing Caitlin Hearn. One of my favorite singers, she's an absolute powerhouse. This is also gonna feature Eliza on the flute. Um, and featuring me, according to Steve, it's not. Um, this is not tonight.
yes, yes tonight. Caitlin Hearn, everybody. Beautiful, as always. Beautiful. Okay, a little bit of history quickly. So, um, the Brecker Brothers came to be in the early 70s, 1974, uh, 1975, someone said. That's when their album was released. That's not when they formed it. Thank you very much. Um, they were formed in 19, around 1974, although the brothers, of course, had been working together frequently. One of the brothers' first big gigs is they, they toured with Horace Silver, the amazing Horace Silver. And, um, in fact, the uh, from Grease Peace is actually something that Randy played in some solo, which is on YouTube. And then he listened back to it and was like, ah, it's kind of hip. And then he wrote Grease Peace around that thing. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so when the Brecker Brothers started doing all of these amazing sessions and writing all this incredible music, um, Randy... He was pretty big on the scene. He'd already played with Blood, Sweat and Tears. You know Blood, Sweat and Tears? Hell yeah. So good. One of the greatest bands ever. If you don't know Blood, Sweat and Tears, go and check them out. They're unbelievable. Think like Earth, Wind and Fire, but with... Well, think like Earth, Wind and Fire. It's freaking amazing. Um, so, Randy had written all of this music. He'd written nine or ten songs um, or, or tunes. Some of them didn't have lyrics, some of them did. And he was approached by Clive Davis, who was the record producer at Arista Records at the time. And, and um, Clive said, we would really, really like to sign you on a three-album deal. Which back then, of course, if you didn't get signed, you were nothing, you know? At Atlantic Rhythm, Stax Records, all these inc uh, Capital Records, all these massive companies um, making thousands and thousands of dollars off of artists, right? Um, they are just signing away their rights to their songs, left, right, center, blah, 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 blah. And the Brecker brothers were like, yeah, well, Randy was like, yeah, nah, um, I'm interested in the deal, but I want to keep the rights to my music. Fair enough. Um, and Clive said, right, what's your pitch to me? And he pitched all these songs and he said, so it's going to be a solo album. My first album, it's going to be Randy Brecker. And Clive was like, uh, that's not what Clive was like. Clive was like, um, yeah, that's not really got the right ring to it. How about the Brecker Brothers? Why don't we call it the Brecker Brothers? And Randy was like, uh, yeah, I mean, okay. I've written all the music, though. This is meant to be my solo album. And Clive was like, okay. Yeah, no, we'll call it the Brecker Brothers. That's what's going to happen. We're calling it the Brecker Brothers. You're going to do a three-album deal for us. And uh, if sales go well, we'll keep you on. Pretty standard industry stuff. Second album they released... Track one is called Finger Lickin' Good. There is no song that can possibly be actually good if it's called Finger Lickin' Good. If you have to tell your audience that it's Finger Lickin' Good, it can't be that good, right? Speak for itself. Go listen to it. It is terrible. And I know that sounds like I'm being really harsh here. It's funky, it's fun. But it is a very, very clear indication of record companies getting involved, too involved. They said to the Brecker Brothers, because their first album didn't do well enough, if you don't start this album with a commercial song, we will not post this album. It's this or nothing. Imagine that. Imagine signing a contract and then the record company pull the rug under you and go, yeah, too bad. You need to write a, a pop song. The Brecker Brothers, understandably, were absolutely furious and had no choice, frankly, because it was that or nothing. So they did it um, and asked their mum to write the lyrics. It's really cute. And that's track one. The second track of the album is more funky weirdness, typical Brecker Brothers stuff. So they finished their second album. It did okay. And they started working on their third album, which is called Heavy Metal Bebop. It's the coolest record. The album cover is insane. It looks like a mixture of Daft Punk meets Tron. It's phenomenal. There's uh, Randy sitting on his trumpet case with his instrument like this, and Sonny's on. And then Mike is dressed in a full motorcycle outfit with his sax case here. It's seriously cool. Go look it up. Heavy Metal Bebop. Um, it didn't do so well. In the music community, in New York and LA, extremely well. The Brecker Brothers were completely, uh, completely held in the highest esteem. Just, they, were the, they were the guys. 
But Arista said, too bad. Sorry, we're not having it. Um, you didn't do well enough. And the Brecker brothers went, fine, that's fine. We don't care. You know, we're going to do our thing. It's not like they weren't making enough money, you know, working with Shaka Khan and Paul Simon, you know, right? The next album they released is called Détente. Now, I don't know if any of you know the definition of that word, if you don't. Détente is a description of being in a state of unease. It means that you've been through something that you're still recovering from and you are frustrated. And the album cover, they look pissed. They, look, they are looking dead at the camera, both of them, not smiling. They're clearly furious. And some of the track names are Baffled, I Don't Know Either, Don't Get Funny With My Money, Teed Off, right? Get the message. So GRP signed them. Now GRP at the time were doing really great things. Um, in the 90s, GRP signed Dave Grusin and did an incredible album called the GRP All-Star Big Band, which Michael Brecker and Randy Becker Brecker both played in. Um, so GRP were much more positive and progressive, much more than, than Arista at the time. So this song we're going to play is Don't Get Funny With My Money. And this is one of Randy Brecker's favourite songs. When we did our little Zoom call, he said, right, man, I'm really keen to see these charts, but i got to say, I really want to see Don't Get Funny. That's, that's, that's my favourite song that we do. Randy sings the lyrics on the original of this. Now, as much as I'd love to, as I aforementioned with my singing, I've handed it to Kate, because you heard Kate before. She's pretty good. Yeah. So Kate is going to take this one. This is called, Don't Get Funny With My Money. Don't get funny 
to last song of the show. No. Oh. Yes, all the good things must come to an end. Skunk, skunk, funk. Oh, oh my god. Some skunk funk. I'm really sorry. We're not doing it tonight. Um, those of you that don't know some skunk funk, it is, um, the, uh, it is the song that put the Breck Brothers on the map, really. Um, the first ever version was on a Billy Cobham album. It's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I thought about doing it um, because, because of the fact that I knew people would scream, some skunk fuck at me. <coughs> um, it's seriously one of the hardest pieces possible. It's really quite ridiculous. And I thought with all the disco we're doing, if we'd lo launched into that, some of you might freak out, myself included. <laughs> it's pretty out, it's cool, but it's out. So. We do have something in its place that's very, very cool. It's another tune from the aforementioned Detente album, um, which is going to feature me, Uli Dooli. This is really fun, really funky, and um, this is about as good a representation of the Brecker Brothers as is possible. This is called Teed Off.
Was that okay instead of skunk funk? Is that alright? Okay, goody. We've we've come to that time. It's the last song. Oh, thank God. I mean, oh. God, I'm so lame. <laughs> um, before we play, some thank yous. Please put your hands together for the amazing Brecker Brothers show band. This has been a mammoth undertaking. Uh, it really wouldn't have been possible to do a show like this um, if it weren't for passion and generosity and hard work. Um, there really is no way I could possibly pay these guys absolutely. I'd love to pay them a thousand bucks each, but um, I'll never recover from that. Um, <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's, it's been a hell of a ride for me. I, I've, I've wanted to do a gig like this for 10 years, ever since I first heard the Brecker Brothers, and um, there was never, it wasn't quite the right time ever until about two years ago when Dusty and I were having a, a chat over, um, over the phone, and um, I said, wouldn't it be cool if we did a Brecker Brothers show? And he was like, yeah, I haven't got any time to help you. Uh, fair enough. Dusty, he does, he does teach saxophone at the uni, so I mean, you know, he has got his plate filled. And he's damn fine at it, isn't he? The one and the only. A beautiful man, a beautiful man. Um, but as I was saying, it really wouldn't be possible to do a show like this if it weren't for people being so supportive of me and patient and willing to uh, strive for high quality um, because these charts are really hard, like really hard. Um, I hope they don't sound hard, um, but I, I'm telling you, these, these are like seriously some of the hardest charts I've ever played in my life. Um, so please, again, put your hands together for this amazing band. Okay, one other thank you. Oh, a few other thank yous, sorry. We have got a few people taking videos and photos and people running sound and we can't do a show like this without them. So please, a round of applause for On Photos, Vinnie Miranda and Ben Merritt, wherever they are. I've seen a few, they look fantastic. On video from Flowing Films, my friend Ryan Casey. And probably the man working hardest of all, and he's the one with the least attention, my friend Nick Swerdloff on sound. Well done, mate, thank you. Nick is such a generous guy. He messaged me a few days ago and was like, hey man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring in a multi-track to record the gig. Is that all right with you? I was like, of course it's okay with me. Like, if, if you wanna make more work for yourself, sure, that'd be amazing. And he did, and he brought in some fancy microphones and it's just, I couldn't have dreamt of a better way to do a show than to have people in my corner helping me out. So thank you very much once again, Nick. Okay. My parents. Raising a child is, from what I've heard, I wouldn't know. No easy feat. From Lower Mitcham, damn straight we're from Lower Mitcham. Yeah, Lower Mitcham, anybody in the house? <laughs> Upper Mitcham, nah, we're Lower Mitcham fam. Over the train line, yo. Um, yeah, mum and dad, thank you very much for the years of support. I don't know where you are. Where are you, mum and dad? Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, Oh, hello, Mum. Hi. Um, my parents are, well, they're the best. Um, <laughs> of course I'm going to say that. Um, they're incredibly supportive and patient of me. Um, and they are, they've both given me the, the most amazing upbringing in music. Dad's a saxophonist, Mum's a violinist. Um, I've got it pretty, pretty good. Um, but despite, regardless of them being musicians, the thing about them that was always amazing to me is that they really did nurture me to make my own choices. Um, they didn't push me into music. Um, uh, I'm, a, I'm a kid with ADHD, woohoo. So, uh, <laughs> yay, neurodivergent, woo! 
Now you know what's wrong with me. Damn straight. No, you couldn't work it out already? Holy shit, man. We did like, you know, three years of lessons together. Eliza's got ADD, I've got ADHD. We're all on the spectrum somewhere. The spectrum doesn't exist. Life is a spectrum. Who gives a shit? <laughs> Having said that, there are certain tropes that come along with being um, incapable of focusing, um, such as not being out of practice. And my parents didn't push me into it. They um, just showed me great music and, you know, invited me to try things uh, when appropriate, um, but were perfectly happy with me not being a musician. Um, so uh, I really think there's no better way to parent anyone than to just let them be as they are, who they are, and support them. So thank you very, very, very much. I can't, of course, don't have the words to express truly how much it means to me. And there is another family um, who I must thank because a few of them, one of the members of the family is there, um, have been hassling me for ever since I started this project to do my damn invoices. And um, I did them. I did them two days ago. I did my invoices, everybody. Yes. So to um, the Dixon clan, Eliza's, Eliza's family, um, thank you very much for your ongoing support of me. Um, I, I was gonna say I'll promise to do my invoices more quickly, but I don't wanna make a promise I might not keep. And if there's anyone here that is owed an invoice from me, I'm sorry, sorry. Okay, thank you, Dixon clan. Thank you very much. Okay, last song. Um, would it be okay with you all if I did actually sing one? As in sing lead. Wa wa we wa, says Melus. Wa wa we wa. Yes, um, I'm gonna sing a song. Um, the very, the, 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 the original singer on this song, this is called Oh My Stars, and the singer, the singer on this is Randy Brecker himself. Um, and um, Randy is a horn player just like me, so if he can do it, so can I. Um, and it means I don't have to ask Brenton to sing it for me. How hard has Brenton worked? Far out. Thanks, Brenton. Okay. Hope you enjoy my debut song. Oh my stars. Oh, and get this, Eliza's gonna sing back up to me. How funny is that? How the turns have tabled.
making it mad Oh my stars, what am I gonna do? Oh my stars, what am I gonna do with you? What am I gonna do with you? Now oh, what's a good man to do? My old sax teacher and friend, Dusty Cox. On the trumpet, one of my oldest friends. It's been nearly, what, 24 years now? Josh Chanawa. All the way in there in the corner, on the keys and vocals, the beautiful Brenton Foster. Hello, sorry for the interruption. It's about a month after this show took place and it's just occurred to me that I completely forget to introduce the singers. Whoops. So, if you could please put your hands together for my friend, Caitlin Hearn, my other friend, Kate Lewis, and lastly, but not leastly, Eliza Dixon. Okay, back to what we were doing. My name is Emil Brown. Thank you for coming to the show. I'm thrilled to do this music with you all in the audience and I couldn't have asked for a better way to do it. It's an amazing day. Thank you so much. Take it out.
love and support. And um, have a Merry Christmas. And um, shit, I need to start my Christmas shopping. I better get going. See you next time.